Hello, Korfman Beginning Orchestra. Welcome to your new classroom. It's me, alone in a room with a camera, and you at home having fun with your instrument. Now, uh, we're, when we're learning together, uh, I'm gonna be mostly reading the notes to you and then playing it. What you can do is, when I'm playing, you can, you can play along with me, or you can just listen and then try and copy what I do uh, on your own instrument. The goal is that you're happy with the sound that you're making. Make sure that you have a good tone using lots of bow. And also, I'm not there to remind you about having good technique. So the first thing that you should do anytime you put your instrument up to play is check your three points. Make sure that you have your instrument on your shoulder, not, not over here. Make sure it's on your shoulder going to the side and that your thumb is pointing straight up right by your first finger tape and that your index finger, this first line here is way at the back at the top so that we're not dipping down or doing any pizza hands or anything like that. So have good technique. The other thing I wanted to say at the very beginning is we wanna take good care of our instruments. Uh, please make sure that you're the only one handling your instrument. If you have little brothers and sisters running around, uh, make sure that, let them know that it, the instrument is for you to play and uh, you wanna take good care of it. So make sure that whenever you're not playing, it's in the case. Don't just leave it on your bed or on a chair or on the floor. Put it in the case, close it, when you are playing it, you can either be in playing position or rest position. You know how easy it is to drop instruments. We've seen that in class before. So I don't want that to happen at home where I won't be there to, to fix it for you. So take really good care of your instrument. That also involves uh, your bow. Before you start playing, you can you know tighten your bow up. You don't want it too tight. If you see that your stick is kind of bending this way away from the hair, that's way too tight. It should only be about a pinky's width in the middle. And then when you're done playing, loosen it. Turn it to the left. You don't want to go too far because the screw will come out. Uh, just go to the left until the hair either gets a little bit floppy or is close to the stick like this. Uh, then the last thing is, you, yeah, keep your bow rosined, but you don't need to rosin it every day. Maybe if you're practicing every day, maybe rosin it every two practices, uh, but you don't want to get too much on there so that it, it's making a bunch of rosin dust, rosin cloud in the air, and then you'll sneeze and people will think that you have a mysterious illness that you probably don't have, hopefully. Stay safe, be healthy. Uh, now, uh, the last thing that I wanted to say before we get into the lesson is, uh, this is my first time doing these kind of video lectures. So if there's anything that I skip or anything that I'm going too fast on, or if, if there's certain things that you want to learn about that, that I can address, just let me know in Google Classroom put any questions that you have, I'll get a notification and I can answer you. So any questions that you have, type it in there and I'll address it in the next video and I'll make sure that I, I read what you said and, and I'll give you a good answer. So don't worry if you have any questions, uh, just make sure you let me know because I can't read your mind through the camera. So again, just type it out, be very clear, say this is exactly what problem I'm having or this is what I want to learn or I'm reading these notes and I'm having trouble getting a good sound Whatever it is, let me know in Google Classroom and I'll get to you as soon as you can, uh, as soon as I can. With that said, uh, let's begin the lesson. We're going to start with our D major scale. To begin our practice, we're going to start with the foundation for all of our music, which is our D major scale. Now we've played D major scale before in our book, uh, for today, though, our practice is going to take place on the very last page of the book. So if you take your All for Strings book and you open it up to the very back cover on the very top line, that is our D major scale. It's the same notes as before. They're just all written as half notes. Now, it's important to keep in mind that half notes, they're two counts each. So when we play them, we're going to use two counts on a full bow. One, two, one, two. After we play our half notes though, we're going to play the same scale as quarter notes. And then after quarter notes, we're going to play them as double eighth notes. So the, the two eighth notes are where we play two short notes at the frog. And the way that I'll, I'll play this is I'm going to start with the half notes. I'll play all the way through. I'm gonna play the quarter notes and then I'm going to go straight into the double eighth note. So I'm not going to stop. And what you can do at home is play along with me, or you can watch and listen and then try and copy what I did on your own instrument. So that ideally you can play the scale all the way through, half notes, quarter notes, and eighth notes, 
nice and smooth with no stops in between. Remember that we are in D major, so we have F sharps and C sharps. So we'll make sure that your second fingers, our high twos, are right next to your third finger, uh, right next to your third finger tape. If it's not squeezed up all the way, it's going to be a little bit too low. So get your second fingers nice and high and third fingers right on the tape. So here we go, D major scale, beginning with half notes. One, two. Another reminder is while you're playing your D major scale and you're walking up, open one, two, three, and you go to the open A, keep your three fingers down. We want to keep a good tunnel when you go to open A. As soon as you play the A, you can lift your fingers and get ready for B, C sharp, D. So that tunnel is really important. If you need to, uh, go back in the video and re-watch or replay along with the D scale, playing your half notes, your quarter notes, and your double eighth notes with a really good sound. Cut. I think I think that's fine. All right. Um, once we've played our D major scale, we're going to be playing our D arpeggio. Our D major scale was played in steps: D, E, F sharp, G, and our D arpeggio is skips: D, F sharp, A. You can find your D arpeggio on page 32. We haven't actually been to this page yet in orchestra, so it's a brand new assignment. It's page 32, number 105 at the top of the page. If you read the red box, the new idea box, it says arpeggios, and arpeggio is a broken chord. The notes of the chord are played one at a time. A chord in music is when you play more than one note at a time. Kind of like how a piano player will play more than one note at a time. But on the violin, rather than playing all the notes together, we're going to play one, one note at a time with good, clean sound. Our D arpeggio begins with half notes, D, F sharp, A, D. So I'll demonstrate the first two measures here. These are D, F sharp, A played in half notes. If you look in your book, uh, at, at number 105, underneath your second note, that F sharp, you'll see a two with a really long line. That line means that we're doing a tunnel. You're gonna keep your second finger down on the D string for as long as that line is there, which is for about four measures. While you're playing your F sharp, you'll go over to your open A and then add your third finger on the A string. So we play F sharp, open A, you'll add your third finger, D, and then the third measure, is just a back and forth between those two notes, F sharp and D. And then still with our F sharp down, we lift the third finger, go to open A, and F sharp. So all of that together, the first four measures will sound like this. The two most important things while you're playing this is one, keeping your second finger down for the tunnel, and two, having good clean string crossings. When you go back and forth from F sharp to your high D, 
make sure that you change your bow angle before moving the bow. If you're moving the bow, and then you try and change, you'll end up with one of those ugly sounds where you catch two strings at, at the same time. So make sure that you play your D string, move the bow to the A, and then you can play. Moving on to the second half of our D arpeggio, uh, you'll see this in measure five where we have quarter notes again. We have the same notes, D, F sharp, A, D, back and forth, F sharp, D, but now it adds open A. So we're gonna have to get really good at keeping our second finger down on the D string like this while moving your third finger up and down. So if you get to this part and doing that tunnel is a little bit tricky, one thing you can do as an exercise is go ahead and set your two fingers, E and F sharp on the D string. So you have two fingers on D and then put your third finger on the A string and just lift your third finger up and down, keeping it on the A string while you keep your F sharp on the D string. So you get used to just keeping them on separate strings while moving your third finger up and down, up and down. Here's what measures five through eight, the, the second half of the arpeggio sounds like. And we do have a retake and repeat at the end there. So once you play it all the way through, you can go ahead and play it a second time. Uh, this is not a very easy one to pick up right away, but so long as you're keeping your F sharp tunnel down, you're going to do fine with this one. You go through and if it's difficult to play at the speed that I was playing right now, uh, don't, don't play along with me, just listen to it and then read your notes out loud. Make sure you're saying them out loud, D, F sharp, A, D, and then play them really slowly, just one at a time. D, F sharp, tunnel to A, D. And then you can tell yourself, all right, here's the back and forth, F, D, F, D. Just go really slow, one measure at a time, uh, because, I mean, you're at home, there's no school, you've got plenty of time, just take all the time you need to learn one measure at a time. Once we've practiced our D arpeggios on page 32, we'll be ready to play D arpeggio march, which is the very next song, number 106. If you look at the first two measures and you read the notes with me, D, D, F, F, A, D, you'll recognize that those are the same notes from our D arpeggio. So if you struggled getting that F sharp to A tunnel, maybe just practice that a few times. Set your F sharp, D, E, F sharp, play your F sharp, Go to open A and back and forth until you're comfortable with that. If when you're playing, you hear this. When you go to the open A, a really nasty sound, it's probably because the back part of your finger, your, your second or first finger is touching the A string. So you don't have to do a big change, just angle your fingers so that they're on the very tippy toes. Make sure that the A is, is very clear and can play by itself when your fingers are still in the D string. Okay, once you have a good clean F sharp tunnel, then we're ready to play. We're gonna take this the same way that we do in class, which is we're going to read through four measures at a time. We'll just read the letters out loud. Uh, even if you have family at home, I'm, I'm sure you can say the letters out, out loud with me. So let's read together measures one through four. D, D, F, F, A, D, F, F, D, D, a, F. Now we'll play it together, nice and slow. So we start on open D and we'll get ready for our F sharp. As a reminder, Underneath your first line, you'll see the two with a long line. And that just means we keep our second finger down. And then there's also one for our third finger. When we set our high D, we keep that one down for as long as that line is there as well. So if you need to, go back and, and spend some time on measures one through four. Maybe you could 
do a whole practice, maybe 10, 15 minutes, just on measures one through four if you need to, get it really good, really clean, and then move on to the next section. So once you're ready for section two, which is measure five, you'll see that five with the circle in your music, uh, we'll do the same thing that we did before. One thing that is new in this section, though, that we didn't have in the previous one, is we have slurs. Slurs are the curvy line that's connecting the two notes together. What that means is that any two notes that are, have a slur that are connected together are going to be on the same bow. So, for example, your first two notes are G, F sharp. Rather than playing separate bow like this, you're going to play them on the same down bow, G, F sharp, like that. And then the next two notes are E, G. So you'll play E, G on the same bow. What's really helpful when you're doing this is make sure that you're starting at the very frog. If you're, if you're starting your down bow kind of in the middle and you play G, F sharp, you, by the time you get to the F sharp, you've run out of bow. So start in the middle and just very slowly play G, use half the bow, and then keep going down bow, go to your F sharp, and then go up bow, E, G. The way that I would practice this one when I'm learning it for the first time is I would say the notes for each slur before I play them. So for example, I would take the first two in measure five and play G, F. Keep my bow on the string at the tip and then say E, G. Next one is F sharp G, and then open A. Now we have B, D, C sharp B, open A, and a circle. Now all of that together will sound like this. So the slurs should really make the sound nice and smooth from one note to the next. If you're taking it slowly, just one slur at a time, uh, keep in mind that you don't want to take your bow off the string when you're reading the next note. So for example, if you're, if you're taking the first notes G, F, and you play, it's like nice, good slur, and then you're looking at the next two and you take your bow off the string and you say E, G, what's going to happen is you'll pick it up and you'll do another down bow and you'll only be practicing down bows. Which you might get super good at down bows, but we want to get good at doing down bows and up bows. So play your down bows, keep your bow glued to the string, don't lift it, then read your notes, E, G, and go up, up. So I hope that's helpful there for the second half of measures five through eight. Uh, we'll, we'll I would like you to, on your own, practice nine through 16, that second line. Do it the same way that we practiced the first line. So only take the first measures, so where you'll see the second line, there's a nine with a circle. Start there and read those notes out loud to yourself. What you'll notice is they're actually almost exactly the same as the first line. D, D, F, F, A, D, A, F, A, F, D, F. And then if you look at measure 13, all it is is a scale. You're walking up one note at a time with slur twos. So uh, if, you're, if you're a little bit not ready for the second line, don't worry about it. Focus on the first line, get really good at that. Take the two sections at a, one at a time. And if you have any questions, make sure you let me know on Google Classroom. I do get a notification for that and I can respond uh, when I'm a available. So uh, I think what we'll do for this week is focus on the first line and next week, we'll work on the second line together. But if, you, if you're really good at practicing and, and you feel confident with the first line, go ahead, finish the second line, finish the whole thing, and then let me know in, in Google Classroom. Say, hey, Mr. Bird, I finished the arpeggio march, and I'll give you a thumbs up. Okay, now that we've practiced our D major scale, D arpeggio, and we've applied it in our song, Arpeggio March, we're going to move over to Airplane. Airplane is the orchestral piece that we've got uh, in class before we left school, 
And if you don't have it, it should be uploaded on the Google Classroom. You can just go to your part, whether it's first violin, second violin, or viola, and print your part. This is important because this is our first orchestral piece. What that means is that everybody's playing a different part. There's first violins, second violins, violas, and cellos, and bass. Now, we don't have cellos or bass, but hopefully some of the older students will join us for our concert, if we have a concert. Cross your fingers. Hope that we have a concert. Now, the way that I'm going to be teaching uh, the airplane sections is I'm going to do one section at a time. So I'm going to start with the first violins and the second violins and then go to the violas. So if you're a viola or a second violin and you don't want to listen to the, me teach the first violins, then uh, look down below. I'll have timestamps for where your section begins. Just go ahead and go to that time in the video and you'll start learning airplane. If you don't care and you want to listen to me teach the first and second violins or the other parts, then that's fine too. So to begin with, we're going to start with the first violins. Now, first violins, we're going to be playing measures 21 through 37. You'll notice this isn't your first notes that you play. That's because we're skipping the introduction for right now and going to the main part, which is at measure 21. There's three things I want you to notice. Number one is right next to 21, it has the word allegro. Allegro means lively or fast in Italian. So by the time we get really, really good at this song, we're going to be playing it pretty quickly. We're going to go fast. But since we're just learning it and we're practicing it, we're going to go slow, learning it one note at a time. The second thing I want you to notice is right next to our notes on the far left side, you'll see two sharps. That's our reminder that we're in D major. D major is the same notes that we played in our scale and our arpeggio. So the more you practice your scale and arpeggio, the easier this song will be. The third thing I want you to notice is that at the very beginning of the piece, so at the top it says Largo, and we're not going to look at that yet, but right underneath where it says Largo, it says 2-4. That's our time signature. It's telling us that there are two counts per measure. This is important because so far in all for strings, we've had 4-4, uh, four, four, meaning four counts per measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But now we're only counting two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Two. If you start to look at your first note in measure 21, you'll see that we have a half note. So, and then another half note, and then we move to quarter notes. For your half notes and your quarter notes, I want you to play with full bow. So make sure you're using as much of the bow as you can, getting all the way up to the tip on your down bows and all the way up to the frog on your up bows. Then if you skip ahead a little bit, you'll see eighth notes. The eighth notes are where you'll see two notes and they have the sticks, and then they're connected with the bar at the top. So those notes that are connected, those are our eighth notes, and they're played a little bit faster. The way that we count those is like this. One and two and one and two and. I'll show, you, I'll show those to you when we get there in the music. Uh, but just remember that whenever you see a quarter note or a half note, use the whole bow, and whenever you see eighth notes, because they're faster, we're only going to use the lower half of the bow. So don't go all the way out here for those faster notes. Just stay at the lower half. Just like we learned arpeggio march, uh, I'm going to read together the notes out loud before we play the section. So our first section, we're going to just do uh, the first one, two, three, four, five, six measures. The first six measures starting at 21. So follow along with me. Find the 21 and just keep your finger on the page and we're going to read the letters out loud together. Ready? Go. D, E, F, E, F, A, D, D, E, E. And then once you've said it and you, you can confidently read those letters, then we're going to play it together. Here's how the, that section goes. One, two. So once you can play that section there, then we'll move on to the next one, which you'll notice those are our eighth notes. There's two notes with a bar connecting and then two more notes with a bar connecting those ones. So these we count one and two and. They're a little bit quicker. So go ahead and put your finger on those first eighth notes and we'll read together. It goes like this. F, F, E, E, F, F, A, A, B. Then we have a half note. So let's play just those eighth notes together. We're starting on F sharp. And we have F, F, E, E, F, F, A, A. Mm -hmm. 
That might be a section where you put a little star and just practice it, repeat it a few times. Then we have more half notes, B and A. Make sure you use the full bow. Then we go B, A, B, D, B, B, A, A. This is all quarter notes. So this is the quarter note section. Then we have eighth notes right before 37. There's two measures of eighth notes. They, they go like this. B, B, A, A, B, B, D, D. And then we end at 37 with an open A half note. Uh, now we'll do the whole section together. So what I would do is first read through the letters all the way through. So we'll do it like this. Uh, one, two. D, E, F, E, F, A, D, D, E, E, F, F, E, E, F, F, A, A, B, A, B, A, B, D, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, D, D, A. Then once you can comfortably read all the letters, don't go on to playing until you can read all the letters and their notes on the page. Then we'll play it nice and slow. Remember, full bow on your quarter notes and half notes, lower half only for the eighth notes. So set your third finger on the A string. Bow at the frog. One, two. And that's airplane, measures 21 through 37. Practice it slowly, take one little section at a time, maybe just go two measures at a time. Read the notes out loud and then play them and then go on to the next two measures. Nice and slow, You're not, we're not impressing anybody right now, we're just trying to learn the notes, get a really good sound and then put it together. And as you play it, you'll, you'll be able to play it faster and faster. And hopefully when we get together as a class, we'll all be able to play it at the same speed. So that's airplane, have fun. Second violins, now that we've practiced our scale and our arpeggios and our arpeggio march, we should be ready to play Airplane. This one, it's in the same key, it's in D major. You'll notice that if you look on the far left of the side of the page, you'll see two sharps. That's our F sharp and our C sharp. That just tells us that we are in the key of D. So the more you practice your D scale and D arpeggios, the easier this song will be. Now we're going to be playing together from measures 21 through 37. So uh, use your finger find on the page, the 21 in the box, and what we'll do first is we'll read the letters together and then uh, we'll play it. Uh, I want to remind you that this song does go pretty low for the second violins. It uses your second finger on G. That's, that's the note B. If you were wondering, how do, I, how do I know that? How do I figure that out? Well, if you're playing on the G and you play G, you put your first finger, that's A, and you put your second finger, that's B. Where that is in the music is if you find measure 21 and then just go to the very next measure, so measure 22, that note there is B. It has its own little line and it sits right below it. That's your second finger on G. One other thing to keep in mind is that as, as we start playing, we have half notes and quarter notes, but then you'll see that there are eighth notes. Eighth notes are where we have two notes and they're connected with a bar at the top. That means that they're a little bit faster. Instead of counting one, two, one, two, you'll count one and two and one and two and. I think the, the best way that we can learn this one is just like we do in class. Again, we're gonna say the letters all the way through and then we'll play it. So let's begin together. Take your finger, point at D at measure 21 and we'll sing the notes together. One, two, D, B, D, 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 F, D, D, B, 
B D D D D D D F F D F D D E F D D F F D D D D E E F F E. Now, if you need to, do it again. Read through those notes. To, read through those notes until you feel really confident that when you see the note, you know the letter name and you know where it is on your violin. Then we'll play it. Now, when I'm going to play it all the way through, when you play it, you might want to just take a small section, maybe just measures 21 through that that first that line there, and go ahead and play uh, just that line, and then go to the next line. You might be wondering, why aren't we starting from the beginning? Well, the beginning is the introduction, and not all of our instruments play the same thing at the introduction. So this is why we're starting at 21, where all of the orchestra is playing the same thing. So let's play together, measures 21 through 37. So you put your instrument up, check your three points, make sure that your wrist is nice and straight, set your bow on the D string, and use the full bow on all of your half notes and quarter notes. So here we are on open D. One, two. And that's the section there. So keep in mind, we do have that new note B, it's low, it's the second finger on the G. And when you get to your eighth notes, make sure your bow is here at the lower half. Don't be playing out here by the tip because the sound is a little bit weaker. So make sure we're playing in the lower half there. And that's airplane, that's 21 through 37. Again, if you need to, before you play it all the way through, just take a look at one small section, read the notes to yourself. D, B, D, 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 F, and then just play that much. And then once you feel really good about that part, move on to the next one. And before you know it, you'll be all the way through the section. And you could probably keep going in the piece and learn the rest on your own. But for, today, for this week, just focus on 21 through 37. And that's airplane. Have fun practicing. Okay, violas. Now that we've played our D scale, our D arpeggios, and we've applied it with our D arpeggio march, we should be ready to play airplane. So airplane, if you haven't got the music yet, it's on the Google Classroom. So get, get your copy of airplane. And we're gonna be looking today at measures 21 through 37. 21 through 37. So if you just look on your music, you'll find the 21 with the box. It should say Allegro right next to it. Uh, what Allegro means is fast and lively, and it means that we're going to be playing pretty fast. Uh, but for now, since we're just practicing, we're going to play slowly, one note at a time, learning the notes first and then speeding them up as we go. And a lot of these notes for you guys are actually on your open G. So we've done most of our playing in class on the D and the A strings, but now we're on G. And I, I think it'd be good if we just started with a quick refresher, a quick review of what the notes on G are. So we start with open G. If you put your first finger on G, you're on A. Then you add your second finger, high two, that's B. And touch third finger, that is C. And then of course after that we're on open D and so on. So the way that we're going to learn airplane 21 to 37 is first we're gonna read the notes together and then we're gonna play them. Now we're gonna do it all the way through. I'm gonna read it all the way through, then we'll play it all the way through. But when you're practicing on your own, I encourage you to only take a small section, take maybe four measures and read them first, read the letters out loud and then play them. And the other thing is that while we're playing, it's very important that we use the full bow. For the half notes, Use the entire bow, and then when you get to quarter notes, still use the entire bow. But when we get to the eighth notes, those are the two notes that are connected with a bar at the top. Those are a little bit faster. So because they're faster, we're not going to use the full bow. 
we're gonna stay in the lower half and just play at the frog for those. To begin with, at the very start of the piece, you'll see your time signature. The time signature is the two numbers at the beginning that says two, four. There's a two and a four right underneath it. This just means that instead of there being four counts per measure, like we're used to in all for strings, there's only two counts. So we're gonna be counting like this. One, two, one, two. And when we get to our eighth notes, you can count those as one and two and one and two and. To, be, to read our notes together, we'll start at 21 and just read them out loud. You can read them with your, with, with your family around if you want or in your room all alone, but make sure you're saying the letters out loud. It's different to say it out loud than it is to just read it quietly in your head. So go to a place where you can say them out loud and let's sing together 21 to 37. One, two, D, G, A, 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 D, 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 G, G, A, 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 B, B, D, D, E, D, E, E, D, D, E, E, D, D, E, 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 D, 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 E, and that's it, 21 to 37. So again, maybe read through a smaller section, get really confident reading the notes, and then go on to playing it. So now we'll play it together. So set your bow on open D at the frog, check your three points, make sure that your viola is on your shoulder and your wrist is nice and straight, your thumb is pointing straight up, and that your bow hand, make sure your pinky is on the top. So we set our bow at the frog and we'll read together starting at 21. One, two. That's it. That's airplane 21 to 37. Lots of playing on the G. That's kind of fun. You get the lowest notes in the orchestra. And uh, when you're practicing, again, maybe take, take a small section, one or two measures, two, or two to four measures. Get really good at those. Move on to the next ones. And before you know it, you'll know the whole section. If by the end of, next, uh, by the end of this week, you made it all the way to 37 and you want to keep going, play the rest of the song. That's fine. But mainly focus. Make sure you can really play 21 through 37 have fun with it, and we'll keep moving together as a class. This has been Airplane. It's going to be really fun to bring it together. Practice.